Good morning, so glad to be gathering together in this time of worship uh, with this community. My name is Caleb and so glad to be together with you of Restoration Church. And today we're going to spend some time uh, in worship, in reflection, in prayer. But this morning, as we begin our time of worship and sort of frame up the, the mindset, the posture that we want to take as a community, I want to read to us from maybe the most famous psalm of all, and that's Psalm 23. And it's one you've probably heard uh, many times, you've probably maybe even memorized it. Um, but I just want to take a moment and read through it slowly and just really sit in these words and, and think about what about the message of this psalm has made it something that has resonated with so many people throughout the generations? What about this psalm has made it something that people have clung to as they go through different circumstances, face different challenges, as they reflect on the character of who God is and, uh, and the relationship that they can have with their Heavenly Father. So if you just take a second, settle your mind, uh, get your, your people gathered together, whatever you need to do to kind of settle in as we start this time of reflection. And let's reflect on the words of this Psalm, Psalm 23, together for just a moment before we enter worship this morning. It says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast before me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Father, as uh, we enter into this time as a community, uh, as we set aside this space to reflect on who you are, on your character, on the way that you're interacting with your people and with the world, my prayer for every person who's participating in this moment is that the words of this psalm would be something they can cling to, that you are a shepherd, a shepherd that's guiding, that's inviting, that's correcting, that is welcoming. Those are the things that a shepherd does, whether it's in the meadows, by the streams, or even in the shadow of the valley of death. We know that that is your posture towards us, guiding, inviting, protecting, disciplining when, uh, when need be, but always out of love and always out of a desire to guide us towards the future, the will, the outcome, the wholeness, the flourishing that you have for your people. So would you help us be a people that lean into that, that listen, that are sensitive to those whispers of guidance because it's through your invitation to live out your will in the world that your presence is made manifest in our world, in our communities, in our families. So may we be sheep listening to the shepherd's voice and doing the shepherd's will wherever we find ourselves today and throughout this week. That's the kind of community that we want to be. We lift up your name today. Amen. Oh, 
we believe that today, Lord. We believe that your promises are yes and amen. We believe that you're the provider, Lord, that you are Jaira. You are, over, you are over everything, Lord. You are everything um, in everything in our lives, Lord, everything that we say and speak, everything that we think, Lord. And we just thank you for that today, Lord. Lord, I just pray that as we go out into the week, Lord, that you would, um, that you would make yourself known to us, Lord. Lord, that we would feel your presence in a tangible way, in a new way, Lord. And we just thank you for the gift that your presence and your spirit is to us, Lord. And so in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Grace. Today we'll be reflecting on the words the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 22, Paul writes this, Remember that at a time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was cr to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are not no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, church. It is good to be with you for the second week in a row. Uh, it, you, you have me for, you know, again, which is a blessing for a lot of you, unless uh, you really don't like me or anything, but hopefully you do. Um, but I'm really excited to be here because uh, we are continuing to talk about Jesus, and that's my, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, the past few weeks, we have been talking uh, about the Bible and how to approach it, what it looks like. Uh, you even heard me last week talk about what is the story of the Bible. And uh, we want to give this week, we want to give you a chance to kind of process that and sit in it. Hopefully you've had a chance to just like figure out what does this mean and how can I approach the Bible. And, and so we want to give you a chance to process and open up a, kind of a different conversation, but a conversation that we've actually been having for a few months now. And it's a conversation centered around values. We are a young new church and uh, a big part of that is creating and talking about our values. And that is important because we know that our values will lead to our culture and the culture is who we are. And so we want to talk about who we want to be as a church. And so we've been having a lot of these value conversations, really what's important to us, what we see in scripture and how we can build a church. And so we want to continue that conversation this morning. And so I want to read just a value that we're going to talk about to give you kind of an overview of where we're headed. And then we're just going to jump in and, and talk about what this means. So here's the value that we're going to be talking about. It says this, we as a church want to be people centered around the calling of Jesus, 
marked by sacrificial love and radical hospitality, living lives of worship and surrendered in prayer. Now, part of this value that excites me the most that I kind of want to camp on uh, today is this idea of radical hospitality. Like, what is radical hospitality? How do we as a church embody that value? And I thought a good way to start was to talk about when I've experienced hospitality, I guess the most, or when I've been, when someone's been most hospitable to me, it's probably the right way to say it in the English language. Uh, And it was actually in Latin America. I went to a trip in Guatemala. And before you kind of go on a serving trip to anywhere, uh, there's an expectation. And so my expectation was that I was going to go and serve them. That was this idea. You, you prepare for months on end, trying to figure out what you're going to do. And that's the expectation that's set. I am going to serve them. And what I found out uh, was actually probably the exact opposite. When I got to Guatemala and just experienced the hospitality, I found out that while I was going to serve them, they in turn actually served me. They were the ones who were the most hospitable. And I, as I look back and think about those moments, like that's what I remember. I remember a community of people pouring out love and hospitality towards me. And that's the crazy thing about that because, like I'll, I'll give you an example. We, every single day, like you, you walk into these places and our mission was to basically like build chicken coops. That's what we were going there to do. We were building chicken coops so that the chickens would be healthy enough to, to lay eggs and then the children of that community would then get the nutrients that they desperately needed. But every single um, meal that we had, uh, this community would like, they would open up their homes, they would invite us in, and then they would prepare like the best meal that you could think of. And every single meal that we had, the centerpiece was a type of meat. It was either chicken or beef, something along those lines. And the reason why I think that's so important is because when I thought about the mission, like, hey, we are going to serve these people so that they could have some nutrients. Every single meal that, that was given to us they were only focused on giving us the nutrients. Like if I think about it, this meal that I was having was exactly what the community needed. But it was them who was going above and beyond to take care of these random strangers from America who were just walking into this community. And when I look back and think about that that time in Guatemala, that's what I think is radical hospitality. And I certainly think that radical hospitality or hospitality, at least for Americans, was just inviting my friends into my home to have a meal. I think true biblical hospitality and the type of hospitality I experienced in Guatemala is actually way deeper. It's this idea of welcoming the stranger, welcoming the immigrant, welcoming the outsider into a community, into your space, uh, to ultimately either serve them or, or, or make them your friends. That's the idea I think that biblical hospitality is all about. It's that idea of welcoming the outsider in. And I think our passage today is a story about that. I want us to see what true hospitality is when we look at the life of Jesus. And so we we read this morning uh, a passage from Ephesians. And Ephesians is a book written by Paul. And a lot of it is about this idea of unity. Because within uh, the church, we have these different groups that were kind of divisive. One was the outsider, one was on the inside. And so Paul is giving them this idea of the gospel and what that means and then inviting them into unity. And so I just want to read uh, the beginning part of it to kind of jump into what uh, I think we could see in this. But I want us to see first and focus in on who's the outsider. Who's the outsider that Paul says? In verse 11, he says, Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth, and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves circumcision. Remember that at a time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners of the covenant of of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. Who's the outsider in our story? It's the Gentiles. You have the inside group, who's the Israelites, and you have those on the outside, those who were the strangers, those who were looked down upon, those people, the outsiders. The reality is, is I think everyone in this world knows what it feels like to be on the outside. We've all been outsiders at one point. Maybe you're a high school or middle school student, and you know exactly what it feels like to be on the outside. In our story here, we see that the Gentiles are on the outside. But I want to make a quick teaching point, because while I, th- I know this is the story, but I-, I just want us to see one thing. The reality is, is that we are all outsiders. Every one of us. If we think about it spiritually, 
about whether we're in relationship with God or not, at one point in our, in our lives, we were all outsiders. If you think about it from the storyline of Scripture, in the first three chapters of the Bible, what happens? Adam and Eve take the fruit and they're exiled. They're outsiders. Every single one of us as human beings find ourselves on the outside. That's what I think is so important about what Paul says next. And what I think is one of the most hospitable moments uh, that we've, we can, any one of us can experience. This is what Paul says in the next verse, in verse 13. He says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You see, Jesus on the cross, I would argue, is the most hospitable moment. It's the most hospitable picture we can all look at. Because what is Jesus doing on the cross? He's dying and paying the price for whom? the outsiders, for humanity, for a rebellious humanity that wants to turn themselves away from God. Jesus comes and gets close to the outsider, gets close to the stranger and dies for each one of us so that we can be brought in into his kingdom, into the presence of God. You see, sometimes I think we don't think that this is a hospitable moment. We know it as sacrificial love. But we don't think it's a hospitable moment because we don't see the plates. We don't see the table. We don't, we don't see the meal. What I want us to see is that we do see a lamb. And that lamb is dying on behalf of all of the world. It is a picture of true hospitality. It's a picture of Christ serving all of humanity to die for his enemies so that we could be brought in. Paul continues to explain this. He says that these two groups, if we jump back to the Gentiles and the Israelites, Jesus has brought the two groups and made them one. He's destroyed the barrier. He's, de- he's brought down the wall of hostility. He has made a new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. Verse 19, Paul says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. You see, Jesus not only uh, dies so that we can experience it, but, but look at what he says. You are now citizens. And not only are you citizens, but you are members of his household. Jesus says, not only can you come into my house, but I'm going to adopt you in. I mean, think about that from a hospitality standpoint. He's not only just serving people for a night around a meal. He's serving them for all time to invite them into his household. That is a deeper look of what hospitality truly is. Paul continues and gives us this incredible picture uh, of the end. He says, in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. God invites us in. We're members of his household, but we become his dwelling place. I mean, that is a picture of radical hospitality. If we want to be a church marked by understanding what it means to truly live out this value, we have to understand that true hospitality, biblical hospitality is deeper than just a meal. It's gonna cost us more than just a meal. It's gonna force us to go out and find the outsider. It's gonna cause us to start rethinking what we think about this world, who we think the outsider is and run towards them. Christ drew near to the outsider so that they could draw near to him. True radical hospitality is that picture. It's a picture of God coming out of heaven and becoming a man to serve you and I. That is different. And it's radical. It's something that is going to cost us something to be able to do. So the question I have is, is basically there's two of them. And I want you to think about, one, who's the outsiders? Who are the strangers? Who are the people that need to be brought in? My hope, and I think the point, is it's going to be different for everybody. We all have different passions. We all have different mindsets. We all have different views of the world of who's on the outside. I think that's kind of the point. I want you to think, who's on the outside? Not just surrounded by borders. I know who the immigrants, I I know there's people coming from different places, but who's truly on the outside? It may be that person coming from a different country. But it may be someone on the outside of society too. Who are the outsiders? Who are the foreigners? Who are the strangers? The second thing I think that I I want us to ask is, well, then how do we actually become hospitable? 
How are we actually hospitable to those people? And I think a lot of it is, I'm not going to tell you any new like uh, revelations on how to be hospitable. The reality is, is you probably actually know how to be more hospitable than I do. But I want us to, I think what this challenge is, is just a different mindset. It's saying, okay, how can you, you know, we think of hospitality, we think, how can I be, how can I bring people into my space? How can I bring them around my table? How can I bring them around my small group? How can I bring people to church? I think all of those things are great to do with friends. I'm not knocking that. But I want you to think with a new lens. What would it look like to bring the outsider into your table? What would it look like to bring your outsider into your small group? What would it look like to bring the outsider and the foreigner into your church? You see, I think that's how we as a church can be marked by what it truly means to be known for our radical hospitality. It's not just us inviting people to sit around a dinner. I love dinner parties, okay? They're my favorite things in the world. But I don't want a church, I don't want our church to just be known by how well we, we, we host dinner parties. I think for us as a church, we have to really look deep and ask ourselves, how can we be known by how, we, how well we invite the outsider into those places? I think if we as a church do that, man, that's what we're going to be known for. And more importantly, people are going to look at our church and they're not going to see us. They're going to see a picture of Jesus on the cross dying for you and I. That's the picture we want to point them to. And so I'll I'll close with this because it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a caveat or if it's just like an addition. Um, I think for me, when when I thought about this, uh, for a lot of my life, I feel like I have, uh, once I've been in, like once I found myself in the in crowd, I never wanted to leave. You know, if I think about church, uh, once I found myself inside, uh, it's great. Like, there's some awesome things. There's community. There's, like, the rewards, the benefits of being uh, on the in crowd. But I think sometimes I found in my life that I've gotten comfortable in that spot where I've stayed there. And I think uh, if you think of it, like, if you put this in a metaphor form, I feel like I've called out from inside that building, like, hey, you on the outside, come on in. And I've called from them from inside the building. And so my challenge or caveat as you, as you think about this, because I, I do think it's important to process, is, is not of like, how can I call people from inside? But how can I go meet them? I, I, I really truly believe that we have to emulate Jesus here. He doesn't just like spiritually or like metaphorically like get close to people. He physically got close to people. And so I think for us as a church, if we're, gonna, if we're really going to embody this radical hospitality, I think what scripture is telling us is to literally get physically close to the people on the outside, which means we're going to have to go outside of our church. We're going to have to get uncomfortable and we're going to have to meet people where they're at. We're going to have to, to go close to the stranger and then invite them in from that standpoint. I don't think people hear the message of Jesus when you're just shouting from inside of the, of the house. But I think they will hear when you meet them where they're at. When you get close in proximity and you point them back to, back to Jesus, back to the, to the message of the cross. And from that space, I think people can hear. And so for us, I, I want us to really think and process, man, what does it look like to be a church known by radical hospitality? I think we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Christ meant to go out into the world and point people back to him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, um, God, just for who you are, uh, God, for your son, for what he shows us on the cross. Um, God, you served humanity in more ways than we could ever even know or understand. And so, Father, I'm just, I'm grateful. I pray for this church as we, as we begin to uncover who we are, if we honestly look at who we want to become, who we want to look like. Father, I pray that we, we ultimately come to the conclusion we want to look like you. And we can be hospitable to the world by, by trying to figure out who are the outsiders, who are the foreigners, who are the strangers, and inviting them in so that they can experience the goodness that we've all experienced. Father, I pray for those people on the outside. God, I pray for them as they, uh, they may feel it, whether they feel alone or isolated, that you would send people from this church to meet them, that we would be able to share stories around tables and meals. Uh, God, just expect it and and honestly in awe of what you're doing. And so we love you, and we thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, whether you're watching here on Sunday or sometime throughout the week. Who knows, whether it's morning, night. 
that's the reality of YouTube and Facebook and wherever we're at here online. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.